Let's really simplify the takeaway, shall we? It does not need to be as complicated as you make it. And I'm going to show you some of the best, easiest tips that you can apply and give a try to give you that consistent takeaway that works for you. So one of the feels I want us to look at today, instead of trying to take away with your wrists, instead of trying to do a really rigid one piece takeaway here, we're going to solve a couple of things. We're going to focus on a takeaway that is not using the tiny sort of muscles in your body or the, the feel so much. What we're going to do is actually combine our natural throwing action, throwing something this way, okay? We're gonna combine that with the correct action with the arm. In fact, get up out your chair. Have you got up? Good. I want you to stand like this to me now. You don't even need a golf club for this, all right? I want you to tuck in your left arm under your right here, okay? Now I want you to make a nice little sort of takeaway, whatever that means to you. I want you to have a nice little takeaway feel here. But instead of trying to hinge the wrist, instead of trying to turn the hips too much, the only thing I want you to feel is that your arm is doing a little bicep curl here, all right? Ever so slightly. When you set up to the ball, we generally want our arm, you know, our elbow pits to be facing up. Be cautious of anything different to that. If your elbows are kind of pointing this way or in, it's going to make a takeaway a lot harder. So stand there, keep your arms straight out, okay? Just at your side. I want you to turn your hands over. You can even hold them up this way. You can turn the hands over, right? So your palms are facing up. We're going to just turn those hands over to sort of form a grip, all right? But the elbows haven't really moved. And there we can do a bicep curl. We've got that set up. We've got our elbow pits pointing up. And now as we make this sort of move back to throw the club this way, okay? We are going to allow the arms to curl like so. Why but one of the things you have to stop doing, which I see kills so many golfers, and it, you know, at times it happens to me, and that's why I try and encourage as much flow into your golf swing, just like you would throwing a ball or throwing an object, okay? You wouldn't do it from a completely static position. You would generally sort of gather momentum from forward to be able to sling the club backwards, because that's what we want. It's much easier to allow the club to sling and go almost where it wants than it is to try and place it into positions, okay? Because I know from personal experience of playing and teaching that you might think you've kind of got the takeaway, but even the next day it can go. And when you're focused so much on minutia, it kind of ruins the rest of the swing. So you think the takeaway has got to be precise. Not really. We just have to change your objective with it. What I mean by that is we have to just get the club going and started, get the movement of the golf swing started, and more importantly than the positions of it. So what do we do, right? If we're not trying to place the hands in position, how can we just sort of say, oh, just let it go where it wants? And you think, well, my swing will let it go where it wants and it, it does all this, right? Well, the swing and the takeaway and everything is going to work on your hip pivot a lot more than you think, all right? And the more you base your swing off how the, the hip pivot moves, which is basically here, we don't want it turning too flat. We don't want it sort of tipping down too much. We just want a nice sort of uh, wind up, if you will, of this uh, hip movement here. All I want you to do is focus on your right heel, okay? That's what we're gonna concentrate on first to sort of start the golf swing, all right? As we begin the swing, before we stand so static, what we're gonna do is actually raise the heel here. We're gonna raise this heel up, okay? And we're gonna just push it back down. And that very 
simple movement of pushing this heel down here, what that's going to do is not only start your golf swing, it's actually going to create an intent that's going to help us a great deal. Because one of the problems is we whip the hands on the inside, okay? We disconnect from the body. But by using the ground first to start this sequence in motion, as long as we've got the next part, which I'm going to talk about, we can actually pivot and get the swing going a lot better, a lot smoother, right? That planting down is our trigger to start the momentum of the swing, there. And you can just rehearse this little movement again and again, and then all you do is carry on the swing a little bit longer, all right? Now, you can do it with every club. I don't want you to raise it up too much. It's just a little heel plant, all right? But it's going to really assist your sequence. Once you we want flow, but we also want to stay connected. And one of the major faults I see when people try and start their swing is getting disconnected. And it can look something like this. So we'll use that head cover in a minute. Disconnected is actually something like the arms lifting up a little bit too much or whipping the hands on the inside. Or well, more often than not, it's going to look something like this where we're trying to take the club away because we're trying to rotate and sort of do this kind of movement there. And we kind of get into this position there, right? And it's kind of hard work to manipulate the club back from there, even if it's a little bit more subtle than that. That sort of arch movement, lifting the hands up, causes issues, right? So we want to stay a little bit more connected. So what we do, I want you to, you can use a head cover, you can use a, a glove, a towel, whatever you need, and tuck it under the left armpit here. And what we're going to try and feel on this takeaway, we're going to try and avoid the arms kind of lifting up as one thing, or rolling the forearms here, but we're also going to try and stop them just crossing the chest without sort of turning the hips, because we're still trying to get that sequence of throw, but we're coupling it with a connected sort of structure here. So the feeling is gonna be like we're throwing, but we're staying connected just a little bit. Now notice, I am not just kind of keeping the arms clamped in here. I'm not keeping them so tucked in that I'm just whipping it inside. And it's like, oh, I'm connected now, great. No, I'm still allowing the hips to turn, the, the hips to go up. I'm feeling a winding action from my feet from that momentum, but I'm just staying a little bit connected here to keep those arms in front and to keep this neutral, all right? And I'm allowing that club to lag back, but my little guide is this head cover. So we can maintain that structure and get that width, okay? Just to start the swing there. And we can practice little shots like this, just tiny little chip shots staying connected, okay? So we wanna feel there. And you work on that. You work on that feeling and keep building it up. Just start your swing. And you've got to piece these things together. So I'm trying to break it down, but this is a wonderful drill to stop those arms getting away from you. If we take our setup here and move the arms back, the forearm here has to actually sort of rotate a little bit, okay? It's going to feel a bit alien if you try and take it wide and outside here. Because, you know, yes, you want the club head outside, but here's the thing. If you're trying to take it on the outside and then hinge the wrist, again, that is just way too conscious. We have to feel the weight of the club. We have to swing the club head. We want gravity to help us, as it were. So we're going to do it by two things. We're going to do it by feeling a good grip, but very supple wrist, and like the forearms, that the arms are kind of heavy. So when we do start momentum, we have flow, okay? We're not trying to swing like this. We're, we've got flow and momentum. Very, very key. The next thing I want you to do is actually, as you, we can do it with your lead arm only, what you're gonna do is push the butt of the grip down, okay? You're gonna push the butt of the grip down that way. And that will provide you the perfect amount of wrist hinge when you need it. So we need it to be natural. And that's where some one arm swings, really feeling like the butt end of the club, that you're pushing 
down to sort of tip the club up this way. That's the feeling, okay? Because by the time you apply that pressure at the top of the grip down, by the time you start doing that, it is in the perfect sort of place where we need to start having a bit of wrist hinge, okay? Pushing down that way, down that way. So the club is just gonna sort of tip up like this because I'm applying the pressure there. And I will have the ideal amount of wrist hinge. It's that easy. Now, I don't want you using and applying every single one of these tips. Just find one that works for you. Give them all a try. Or even just from watching, you might go, aha, that resonates with me just a little bit. And I want you to stick to it. But here's the thing, we are all just a little bit different. We're gonna feel different things. And that's what I want you to tap into, the feeling that makes sense for you and the rest of your So first, let me kind of explain a tiny bit about what we're talking when the hands come too much in the inside. Even if you're trying to get a bit of width, and the hands are a bit on the inside here, doesn't necessarily, I'm not referring to like the line of the shaft here, okay? It's just where the hands are. If the hands are being pulled across the chest, okay, where we're losing this space, what happens is we kind of get to this sort of backswing position where the elbow is here. We're gonna struggle with distance. We're gonna generally tend to come a little bit steeper in that sense. We wanna kind of have a bit more neutrality and a bit more width. And we can do that with a better takeaway. So let me ask you this. Do you find that you struggle with the takeaway? Do you feel that like you kind of get stuck halfway back and then you have to lift the arms and everything just sort of goes and feels out of sync? Some days it might feel fine, but then the next day it's like, man, I lost my swing. It wasn't out of sync. The chances are it's because you're getting a bit deep with the hands and the takeaway is just sort of out of sync with the body, uh, the, the torso, the lower body, everything. Let's make it easier. But let me know if that's you. What we're talking about is we want sort of width, right? But not trying to force it with a big turn. We're just allowing the body to sort of move in a free flowing motion, but give us the kind of swing that we want. And we do it not by flipping the hands on the inside, not by doing this. You can do that. <laughs> you can do that here. You know, you can even start the swing just here and then we sort of rotate up. But that takes a little bit of practice. And it also takes a few other things to work correctly with the hips, stuff like this. So let's get the biggest bang for buck. As we take the club away, instead of the club coming on the inside, and going deep and the arms being pulled this way because that's what it feels like as soon as i'm here it's, it feels weird to kind of lift the arms up that way it's just easier to sort of do this which is going to look something like that all right and then we're sort of hitting and forcing through hold on let's just set this and the swing might look something a little bit like this okay and the results are gonna be fine, but it's not ideal. It's certainly not optimal. So all I want you to do is think about the takeaway in two ways. First way I want you to think about the takeaway is just as I am to the camera with you or someone standing behind you, I want you to feel like the club face is pointing at the camera just a little bit longer, okay? Just that little bit longer. We don't want it going too far and we'll get into that in a second, but the initial movement is just that. So it's staying a little bit more towards you. That's the first thing. But as we do that, I don't really care how you do it. Just feel like the club face, the back of the club face, well not the club face, the back of the club, <laughs> the back of the club is just pointing to you a little bit longer. Doesn't mean I'm kind of doing this, just till I get to about uh, knee height, all right? just about there that's the feeling but notice we want to feel the weight of the club we want gravity to be assisting us as we make this swing we don't want to be dead rigid here and then have to force up we don't want that we want it to just sort of start 
and then flow, okay? A natural, well, there we have it. I want you to give just one of those a try. Make sure it fits and makes sense to the rest of your swing. Whether it's making sure that your takeaway matches the shot you want to hit, whether it's reducing the amount of fidgeting you're doing and you're using the larger muscles to create momentum. Or perhaps you want that specific feel that you can rely on that doesn't detract from the shot you're hitting. All of them can work, but I want you to focus on one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and go and check out this lesson here because I promise you that is going to make the rest of the golf swing just that bit easier. And I'll see you next time.